Game Time Brian, otherwise known as the Mailman. Just trying to get out the content for you guys. This is a very crappy, rainy, cold day in South Jersey. I am on my fight. Well, I'm off tomorrow, which is Sunday. Mailman's always off on Sunday, but I plan on going back to work Monday. Still have a head cold, but that's about all it is. I got my little tea with my warm honey with a little bit of milk. Not bad, not bad. It's vanilla, the tea with a little bit of honey. Yeah, it's it's sight. But anyway, we got a lot to talk about here. Um, Dallas Cowboys are infuriating a lot of us, but it, in the same sense, um, with it's par for the course. It's what we expect as Cowboy fans. Uh, none of this really surprises us now. I did tell Mark Holmes last night when we recorded the video that I just uploaded as a premiere this morning, first time I did that, but I thought that was kind of neat where I could interact with everybody during the broadcast in the chat. I'm deciding on whether to do that. You'll know when you see it. I might just upload it. But that being said, um, Dallas has to get below the salary cap. They have to by March 13th. It's not like... Just because they haven't done anything doesn't mean that they're not going to do anything. So um, as frustrating as it is, but as a YouTuber, you're putting out content. I have to react to what is happening at the moment as opposed to what I I don't want to do all these videos about what I think, because you know what happens when you think, you know, you, you like get a lot of stuff wrong. I'm reacting to the shit show that is the Cowboys right now. Now, if you ask that, like if you talk to them, they think everything is hunky-dory, par for the course. Stop, pause, that's the problem. Par for the course, same as normal, um, is not a good deal because normal has not been good enough. It's been, what, 29 years since we, uh, they've been to the Super Bowl? Um, that's what it's about. Is it not? Is it, is it about a 12 wins seasons, which people go, oh, well, you're getting, you're getting greedy. You're getting greedy with the 12 win seasons. Yeah. Well, it's about postseason, people. I'm the one that tells you if you get to the Super Bowl and lose, it's not a good thing. Okay. It, it's just not. If you get to the Super Bowl and lose, it's a, not a successful year. Now, you could say for us, since we have had that lack of success or a team like the Cleveland Browns, let's say, or, oh, I don't know, the Houston Texans, let's say, let's say, who else? You know, who else in the NFL hasn't sniffed the Super Bowl in a while? Us. We're right there at the top of that list. I think it's us and Cleveland are the two longest droughts in the whole NFL. But I'm not here to rail on the Cowboys all day. I do have a little bit of news for everybody. Tyron Smith is going to hit the open market. Just came down. Um, my guess is Dallas and the agents could not agree on a reduced salary. That's not to say that he won't be back. This just you know, confirms it more that... We are going to have to do stuff in free agency. We don't have that many draft picks. So what do you want in the first round? A center? An off? I still stick with Tyler Guyton. Left tackle out of Oklahoma. That's what I believe. I'm sticking to it. But again, I want to trade down. So that probably puts you away from Tyler Guyton to be able to get the center. But they, now I'm hearing that they want a linebacker in the second round. So it's kind of like what, like we're going to know. So Catboy's going to have to start doing his job and getting under the cap, which he can very easily. Why we're waiting is the frustrating part. Um, Dallas Cowboys are sitting down with Michael Gallup. That's the, make no mistake, people, that's one thing and one thing only. That's to sit down and talk about Michael Gallup taking a pay cut or he will be a post-June 1 release. They're putting it in Michael Gallup's court, 
Uh, stay tuned on that one. If I'm Michael Gallup, I'd probably want to my release and go, uh, what better what better time than in, in NFL history than to be a free agent with all this windfall of money that has come, you know, seemingly from the gods and the new TV contract, and it's only going to go up and up and up. So Michael Gallup should test the market as Tyron Smith is going to. Uh, final order of business that I'm seeing today is that Trey Lance will compete with Cooper Rush for the backup job. Say it, I say it again, you've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Let him boozle. Let him stray. Run him up. This is what he does. Yeah, don't buy it. There is no competition. If it's Trey Lance does anything at all, shows anything, based on and now he's making just about $5 million a year uh, and the draft capital that we gave up, a fourth-round pick th- in this year's draft, he's going to be the backup. He's going to be the backup. So I think Cooper Rush is out, or Cooper Rush would have to agree to be the third-string guy. So... With that being said, um, let me know what you think in the comments about that. I think it should be Trey Lance as the backup. Move on from Cooper Rush, draft a young guy. But let's, um, I want to play, and we'll stop it at times, and I will give you my take on what he says. It's a long video, uh, about a little under 42 minutes. So we'll see if I listen to the whole thing or what, but... Let's go over to here, and I want to let her play, and we'll go from there. As it turns out, those are legal matters, and, and uh, uh, I can't. Thoughts on uh, the recent decisions about they're forcing you to get a paternity test those kinds of things? This, what now? Excuse me. So the ruling that they're asking you to take a paternity test, any comment on that? Uh, I don't. Those uh, are, are uh, as it turns out, those are legal matters, and, and uh, uh, I can't talk about them right now to some degree, but uh, uh, that'll work through, and I expect uh, much uh, perceived better uh, news in the future. He's still dealing with that legal issue um, with his illegitimate child. I'm not trying to be mean, but that's a fact. Back in the 90s, he wed a child. He has given her money uh, already. It's not, it's not like he has acknowledged it. She has come back to the table. I know she wants to have a relationship with her father, as any daughter would, whether you just had a, a quickie, you know, so to speak, whatever term you want to use. Uh, it's your responsibility. So he did give her money, I believe, early uh, a while back, but nothing, nothing life changing. Let's put it that way. Uh, just remember, these are billionaires we're talking about. Now she's pressing the issue. So just to give you a little backstory. Well, uh, the uh, uh, first of all, uh, after the dust settled of the disappointment of our loss, uh, I think that uh, uh, the positives that we have, uh, and uh, I'll start with Dak, uh, those positives, uh, he had uh, one of the best years, as you all know. But the thing that I would point out is that uh, we think that uh, and a lot to do with the fact that Mike McCarthy is uh, right there involved in the uh, Dax play more directly and more involved in the offense. Uh, we think that that really uh, showed uh, real results in a positive way last year and think that there's a lot more to come and not just pers- nuances. We th- I think there's a big positive as to uh, what we can do to even improve on how Dak played last year. And so uh, 
all of that gives me a lot of promise for uh, what we're doing, the direction uh, that we're going. And uh, so that's a big positive. So uh, uh, we'll see, uh, we're going to be working on his uh, contract as we uh, get into the future, I mean, get into the future days of this coming year. And uh, what we do there or don't do, I couldn't say at this time, but uh, the main thing is that uh, he's going to be our quarterback this year. You said this year that it's still understood that I don't, you wanted, don't you take want that. years did to I, come as well. Did I, uh, okay, I shouldn't have said this year. <laughs> he's going to be our quarterback. Okay. Okay. <laughs> since we're since we're all friends here, take this year off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've no got my mind. It. I've got my mind uh, uh, all in as far as uh, we're going to do everything that we can do to um, have this year be as successful as it can be. And one of the reasons I feel good about it is because uh, uh, Dak is for sure our quarterback. When you say you go. All right, let's hold it here. Now, he's saying Dak is for sure our, our quarterback. I want you guys to understand one thing. Um, Dak Prescott has literally hit the lottery here. He banked on him. He, he, I mean, listen, he's done it multiple times. All the trolls aside, Dak Prescott has bet on, bet on himself his whole life. Um, that's why I like the man so much. Um, he's getting ready to be a father. Um, he's a great role model first, and he's a great quarterback second. Can he win it all by himself? No, he's not Patrick Mahomes. Shame on you, Dak, for not being Patrick Mahomes. Um, Patrick Mahomes has Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey, but not to mention the studs on defense. But listen, it's, it's, it's clear that Dak is a very good quarterback. Just ask the, the teams in his division. They can make fun of him. They could do whatever. He His record in the NFC East, which is the most important thing you have to do every year, which they do for the most part. In recent history, they do well in the NFC East. Yeah, of course, every team has their down year. It's the playoffs. But why are we messing and playing around? Just sign him. It's not people. They are clouding us and trying to cloud our judgment as to how hard it is to it's not hard okay it's not hard to sign it um make him feel comfortable have a long deal four years five years you can easily pay him the 60 a year that'll jump to number one in the league he would take it obviously it's about the guarantees give him the guarantees you'll have opportunity to save immense money under the salary cap for at least the first two years of the contract. While the cap keeps going up, you have him under contract. So why we're messing around and playing these games, the Cowboys feel the need to win every negotiation, but at some point you need to take a step back and do what's right for you and the team and sign him. If you and if you don't want to sign Dak, then then just cut ties. Why would you keep him for a year at fifty nine point five? Try and find a situation that suits him well for those people who want to get rid of him. I don't, but I see your point. Those of you who think that Dak can't get it done and tired of it, okay, then we need to. I mean, we're going to have a lot of money. We're going to still owe him ninety million, even if we get rid of him over the next couple of years. So. It is what it is. Let's listen to more of Jerry Jones. We'll do all in to do it, be as successful as you can be. What does that look like? Is that, it's how many are you things. Do, how are you going to do things differently than in the past to, to, to be all in this year? Well, I will assure you there will be some things done differently because we're going to be working on different players and drafting different people. Mm -hmm. And so just the very nature of it is different. Okay. Different people or different, uh, we've got different coaches. Right. Uh, but uh, the, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, the, uh, the attention that our, uh, the nuances of where we are with the cap, the nuances of where we are with our position in the draft, the nuances of where we are with our uh, free agents, that we 
get that involved in the definition of we're all in. As you would look at every one of those aspects, and I probably left off for that many again, then we're going to be doing every solution or go working toward the solution being to win this year. Okay, so he's all in. They want to win this year, and that's great to say that. But your actions leading into free agency tells you same old, same old. Now, I, as we discussed, they have to make roster moves in order to get under the cap. They act like it's a big deal. You, you're looking at the Washington Commanders literally create upwards of $120 million under the cap. They just created $45 million in two days. It's, it's easy to do. We've talked about it at nauseum. But, you, you know, you want to do that now. Instead of Stephen Jones being at the combine, you could, you know, you could zoom into these meetings. You know, like you should. Be, I mean, I don't have a problem, but if you're going to come out public and go, "We're not going to talk to this, that, and this agent," then, then, yeah, then what are you doing? We don't need you looking at talent, Stephen. You don't know a, a football from a hockey puck, if so to speak. You didn't even know who DeAndre Swift was when did you, Detroit called the draft room last year. Uh, before he signed with the Eagles um, or was traded to the Eagles. He called you first. And uh, you didn't even think enough to the, discuss it with anybody in the organization. You didn't really know the player or didn't want to know the player. That's alarming. So you need to get these guys and the cap under control now get under now so you all your options are on the table going into free agency so that way we can knock off a couple needs going into the first few rounds of the draft the first two rounds of the draft we don't have a fourth and fifth round draft pick so i expect us to trade down in round one but if they don't then then you're going to have a one a two a, a three and if you want to trade up, you're talking about taking away from the following year's draft, which you don't really want to do that year in and year out. And then, like, two sixes and a seven. That's all you have. So you can't have both. You can't not want to dabble in free agency and then go all in in a draft when you don't have a fourth and a fifth round pick. So a little odd, but um, hopefully – Things start happening quick because Stephen Jones likes to do things last minute. Every solution. And that's what I mean all in. We won't, uh, uh, we won't put a lot of, of things uh, and get value uh, when we can get more value now or get more value in the future. We'll be all in this year. And that, that could be in any area. That could, it will be in any area. But... Uh, uh, it certainly uh, doesn't have to just be in free agency or it doesn't have to just be in the draft, an aggressive approach to the draft, uh, trading up with a lot of picks or trading down with a lot of picks. Uh, we, we will just uh, have in mind the team that's going on the field this year. And uh, we all know that every team in this league has uh, limitations as far as where they are on the cap and where they are in the draft and uh, where they are with their free agents, who they can use the franchise tag, you only have one, uh, all of those kinds of things. But uh, my point is that uh, uh, we are, can be better. Dak can play better and he had maybe, uh, you could argue one of the best years he's ever had in his career. But the good news is that uh, I'm convinced that he can play better and I can uh, I'm convinced that we can do uh, some things uh, better all the way around, and so uh, we're all in. So it doesn't mean you're going to play in the higher part of the free agent market. That's your. That would be somebody taking one part of ten things we're doing. Okay, we're I'll drafting. Take that part. We're drafting. We're doing anything, and we will see. You don't have a lot of picks, so you're not drafting. Agency. It would, with everything else in mind, where we are in the cap, where we are with our own uh, contracts. Stop it with the cap. Uh, where we the are cap can with, be easily uh, manipulated. Uh, Stop it. The draft. We'll take all of that in mind, and we'll be making a decision that helps us win now. You, you, you signed so you could have a free agent that in a free agent. have that free agent 
uh, that free agent would cost you as much as three other players would cost you. Yeah, okay. And we're going to be right. all in with the three other players. But is that three other all players in? making minimal money? So how are the they all in? Of all in might be uh, uh, a trade like we didn't make or a sign. Uh, we didn't sign a player last year uh, or two years ago that uh, we ended up with three players for. This is That's all in. What we're talking about. Why are you even is, talking, what Jerry? What did I mean when we said all in? You're not in charge. Okay. Your definition of what is all in and mine might not be the same the thing. Price is wrong, but I'm trying bitch. to win the games this year with my decision. So I'm all in to this year. <sighs> I guess this is the question how is that different than past years? Because you've always been trying to win games this year, theoretically. That's uh, a good point. I've drafted quarterbacks for the future. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Look at him. He's getting, uh, he's getting a little tough. To that this year. That's an example. Right? Better watch your job, man. Uh, he may come after you. Pick for, uh, use our first pick for a quarterback this year for the future. If you had an opportunity, there you are at 24. And the greatest thing since ice cream is he's sitting there. I'd be reluctant to do that this year. Let's call all in to this year. Is Zimmer on a one-year deal? Zimmer uh, is on a one-year uh, technical deal, uh, but not necessarily here just for one year. But to, but to answer you correctly, his contract is one year. How does having your assistants all on a one-year deal play? They're not all on one-year deals, number one. The assistants aren't. But I will say this, that uh, uh, I've had it uh, both ways. Sometimes a year creates a lot of energy and a lot of... Uh, uh, so what are you saying? Wrestling. Your coaches didn't do a good job uh, last year? So what are you I've saying? Never had really... Anybody you won 12 games. You can't have it both ways. I can see one bit of difference in their effort or their wanting to win or doing what Everybody wants to win, to Jerry. Sometimes you just got to go out and give them the players. I've never seen any difference. Does, does it add to uh, that sense of urgency, though, with one year with the head coach, all the line in, on a, on a one-year deal? Does that, did it add to the all-in mantra or – I think that uh, we should. Uh, I, th I think that you're that we can confuse uh, other other things you're trying to accomplish. Uh, you're trying to confuse that and make that fit something that is a little bit uh, more ambiguous. So I would not want to do that. In other words, mm, uh, is that all in that. Uh, because we got you on a short lease and you got to work harder, you got to win more games or something? Work like harder. That. Uh, I'm not, no, I'm not doing that. That's not what I'm doing. I saw a headline today that all in means uh, uh, per, uh, you've got to perform. Uh, that's the financial part of it. And, uh, uh, that was the prudent thing to you do. love headlines jerry that's what uh, it's about right it's not really about winning really is it this year as we're going through some of the staff changes we're making because of quinn's departure and um, because of where we were uh, with mike i said when we announced mike that does not in any way rule out with me making a extension of mike uh, before training camp or during training camp I've extended contracts on coaches all during the All right. Year. I got to stop it for a second. I know we're getting long-winded, but we're going to listen to this. I, this is an important you know, press conference here. You know, Jerry, Jera. Why would you come out and say um, this doesn't pre you know, preclude us in doing something long-term? What's going what's gonna to happen between right now What's going to happen between right now and uh, the training camp? What's going to happen? Maybe Mike don't want to be here, Jerry. Now, I'm not saying that, but, I mean, why would you say, well, there's nothing precluding us? It, it should be easy. These things are easy. 
So, let's continue. Uh, the way we set the one with up with Mike, and I wanted to do it that way, and he agreed, and so, uh, and so on. But uh, I wouldn't, again, I'm being redundant here, but I would not look at contracts, player contracts, uh, uh, what we do in extension of those, and try to put it in a category, well, uh, what do we got after next year? What I don't want to happen is uh, I'm going to be around here a long time. So we got a lot You're of 81. Years. I hope you are. I God bless you. I don't want to do anything. First of all, the rules prohibit you from doing some things that uh, oh. would uh, cut your nose off, spite your face. About not three not, three not, years not get your roster in order and get under the cap. I want to win one that then just as much as we do now. But when we do get a chance to make a decision that's not dumb and it's for uh, performance opening day, you'll see that that way. And I see that, and I see that, and uh, uh, but uh, it always has been. I've uh, made changes in coaches with years on their contract, and uh, so I've done both. Uh, the, the, this, uh, uh, the way we did these particular contracts. I just feel like Stevens running the show. But uh, they're not all. It's all, like he's throwing stuff up against the wall here. But I see the perception. There, there was obvious frustration uh, after the loss and disappointment, and you know, obviously it was shocking. Are you re-energized? What, 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 how do you shape the, the mindset of the franchise? Are, are you re-energized now after it, the Green Bay loss? Do you, you see a new energy? Uh, I, 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 I wouldn't. I wouldn't say uh, uh, hmm. that. Uh, that I'm energized. What I would say is I'm resolved. Actively picking the good things we've done and being energized about those, and, and uh, including him, believe that things going at the same time. I don't want to get philosophical here, but that's what we've got here okay. with this team and with w the way I look at this team. Fast forward a little bit. Good things, things to build on, things to build on this year, things that if we can get going, we can compete. You have to look at level. history, though. Uh, Usually the team doesn't win. That, the uh, same team doesn't win back-to-back -back uh, in a division. Uh, I'm not saying you're not going to try, but. Fixed. What, what are some of those things? Uh, well, of the kinds of things you'd look at. We need some uh, uh, better help in a run game, period, both sides. Yeah. The things you got. Which is free agents or draft picks. You don't have enough draft picks. You've got to address free agency. Uh, Certainly need. Uh, Nobody's uh, saying negotiate in the public. Uh, it's going to take money uh, to get these guys. That's how it really works. Be more disciplined relative to penalties. Uh, Look at him. Look at his face. Critical times, untimely penalties. Penalties wasn't what got you blown out against and, Green uh, Bay, th those, Jerry. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, those come to my mind at the same time we uh, 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 are going to certainly. Uh, uh, probably lose uh, players, uh, so uh, we need to have some of the younger players that we have uh, uh, st uh, step up and uh, uh, be uh, uh, a part of, uh, of what we're doing on both sides of the ball. Uh, so uh, it's it's uh, not an unattainable situation to have the deep disappointment and frustration that our fans and I have and we all have about how we ended. Mm -hmm. That's but what it's about. But also be not foolish about what we've got as a team and not throw that out with the dish bathwater and build off of that and that's what we Well, that starts with uh, that starts with your quarterback, right? A, Making a decision, a not Do you think you guys have a culture problem with keeping you back in a what culture a problem. problem. The front office has a culture problem, I, in my I opinion. I really won't hear your definition of what culture is. I, I, I really uh, 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 can't say uh, I, uh, 
when I look at our team, we need to be able to stop the run better and we need to be able to run the ball better. If that's culture, then we got a problem. It's a it's a talent I'm not, problem. I'm not, I'm not, offensive and defensive line. Center. I hear I they're talking to Tyler. I forgot that no, one. I hear they're talking yeah, to Tyler no, Biotish. No, no, not at all. That's not, our, that's not our good enough. He's not good team. enough. Uh, and many deserve to have, feel good about this. If I'm Tyler, I'm hitting the open market. Good about a lot the of money out team. there. Uh, that they, uh, what Take they care of your family. To the team. But those happen to be the very same players that get down on themselves more than anybody when they don't play well. That is not a problem on this team at all. We don't have anybody pointing it over there at somebody okay. else. They're pointing it at their own mirror. So uh, I guess that could be defined as some culture. But I don't see that on this team at all. I think Mike McCarthy has done an outstanding job of but we're going to let them be a lame duck and not re-sign them. Well, they could. They still could. And, and uh, win more than uh, win in the playoffs. What's the next step for Micah Parsons? What do you need to see from Micah Parsons, and how do you think Mike Zimmer... Micah needs help. Well, I think Mike appreciates uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, ability of Parsons to move around and give the offense uh, a lot of different looks. I think he appreciates him as a pressure player. Uh, that that's his that's his main forte is pressure. Uh, but I think he also appreciates him to the extent that well, uh, anything we can do. It's all about the team, Jerry. That much. Let me go to give him some. Uh, that's Mike Zimmer. Not that that is the support. I'm just saying. Hey, Mike. That's his thought about uh, Micah Parsons. And going with Zimmer, how much does that decision factor in with what you could do with Micah? How much does that play a role? When you well, I think Zimmer is an outstanding coach and, and knows. Always the, has been. I'll agree with Jerry there. Mike yeah, Zimmer has always been well, NFL, very good. Sure. He he does well so against well. the Kyle Shanahan I offense have, too. Have bang bang. When Mike talks about how. Uh, this would be a good way to work and, and uh, coach Micah and, and create uh, challenges and problems for the offense. Uh, I give him a lot of deference. He's been there a lot and had a lot of success. All right, let me, and, let me uh, fast forward uh, to this. We're getting too nice. I've done that with our scouts. Uh, he played well. Kind of stopping the run, needing bigger bodies on the defensive side of the ball. There we go. How big of an emphasis is that for you guys? Well, I think we... Uh, uh, everybody knows that we um, uh, were not what we were early. Uh, and yeah. That had the Osa Odigizua the last two years uh, is a really good pl young player, but he's tailed right. off in both seasons. Uh, need to address that. He's entering the uh, final year of his probably, uh, deal. Uh, uh, tried to because of our He'll be here, though. The availability of an alternative. Uh, we uh, got read pretty good by the opponent. I would like to know why they don't with value the linebacker. With the run game. Less than 4% so, uh, of their salary cap is allotted towards the linebacker position. Assessment of what happened to us. Which helps the stop answer. the run. In other words, you need to not get as thin at linebacker, and you need to... Uh, uh, what you need to be emphasizing with the linebacker is helping stop the run. And then um, uh, while we had some guys get in and do some good work in the middle, uh, we could do better. Marquise Bell is not a linebacker, linebacker, and he doesn't want to play linebacker. And, uh, I think all of that's very doable. Uh, I've seen uh, Zimmer uh, uh, from a standpoint of his experience alone with the Cowboys over the years address these very issues. So uh, feel good about it. Uh, uh, Dan Quinn would have addressed the same issues. Dan Quinn would have, in my mind. And so it's no uh, rocket scientist here on what we need to both. All right, let's fast forward here. As you can get in and uh, get on the same page and see if you can, uh, where the focus would be. Yourself, you just compromise 
and do more their way. On how you're going all in. Where do you stand with CD? Well, I like the player. Uh, well, we want to. Uh, we uh, publicly have said we do want to. Uh, uh, in the future, we're going to extend. Our goal is to extend CD and, and uh, plan to do that. Uh, uh, and and the detail of that is is not something that we should discuss that way because uh, just the way people you do business with their own people's business. But the point is that yeah, we do want to extend CD. I haven't listened to guys in here a long time. Got the Hall of Famer. How difficult is that decision in terms of now obviously it's a free agent, but how difficult is that? Those decisions when, when you talk about bringing him back if you want to. Uh, we have had such a great uh, uh, relationship and uh, with his time he really is one of the most remarkable people that I've had a chance to be with in the NFL he's gone Everybody that's what that means and um, what he has been uh, and he's still so young but I remember how young he really was when he first came in and some of the challenges that he had and uh, so uh, We'll get in there in the right way and uh, uh, discuss his business and uh, work out something that's uh, good for both of us. He's had a great career. He's a Hall of Fame player. He's a Hall of Fame. And uh, Hall not of only fame. that, I think his personal life is uh, one of the great stories that I have been a part of with players or coaches or that's not going to get a Super Bowl that's another player yet another Hall of Fame so player who I'm is going not going to get a Super Bowl that, uh, by doing things the way we uh, currently do something uh, that uh, would have him on the field I can't tell you how good a shape I thought we were in with him as we got into the playoffs and his health and where he was thought we were just where you want to be and I give a lot of credit to coach Mike McCarthy him of getting it pushed up there to where we had him just right as we went into Tyrant Smith they're talking about Leighton Van Der Esch we know Leighton's going to retire let me hurry up and fast forward to uh, consider it we've got to really give that consideration due to because of uh, you need Michael to Gallup as far as a person player oh uh, they're talking about Gallup we did when we made the agreement with him. Okay, uh, but uh, uh, we've got some other considerations we have to consider right now too. We'll go over that with him. How, how do you feel right now about Trey Lance compared to when you guys made the trade for him? What have you heard from the coaches, and how do you feel about what his future might be? Uh, era is really up. Era. Uh, he era. You sound like my father. My father was from Oklahoma. He's, uh, exceeded expectations as a person, as a worker, uh, as a character. He's got unique skills. Uh, he's. Uh, 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 All right. I can't take any body. more of this. Man, it's tough to listen to sometimes. But in wrapping this up, as you hear, he brought up Leighton Van Der Esch. Get back in focus here. Leighton Van Der Esch should retire. He shouldn't have the... Now, I understand you could... It's a money thing here, people. Um, if he retires, it's different. So I, I understand why they're waiting for Leighton. I expect Leighton to come out and say, due to health concerns, he has to retire. It sucks. But this is yet another negligible thing that your organization did going into last year, like they did with Jonathan Ridgeway the year before. Uh, we were so thin at linebacker. It wasn't a, you can't ever count on Leighton. No offense, Leighton, but you've been hurt many times. So you can't really, you know, as an organization, you can't put all your eggs in that basket. Overshone got hurt in the preseason. So there's no excuse to expose all your young linebackers on the practice squad that one by one got plucked up. Now, I'm not saying they were all Pro Bowl players, but 
They're more of a linebacker than Marquise Bell, who did a wonderful job, but Marquise was way outgunned with weight. Uh, you know, the one thing about him, he had probably just as much speed as anyone would have playing the position, but the weight it wears on a guy that's a little over 210 pounds, you know, as opposed to 245, 255. So, um, Leighton has Leighton is going to be gone. Michael Gallup, that yeah, they were talking about. I already touched on it. They are um, they are considering um, moving on from him, and likely they should. He's a progress stopper. Like I say with Dorrance Armstrong, that we're not going to be able to keep Dorrance. He's going to get a lot of money on the open market. He just will. Seven and a half sacks for Dorrance Armstrong. Blocked a uh, punt, a blocked field goal play special teams, it's rare to find. But I believe he's a player also that if he gets more snaps, won't necessarily give you more stats. So that's, he's a second-tier rusher that's probably going to get paid. I don't know how, like, what that means, but it's probably going to be, he's probably going to get paid more than what they could afford. And you got to realize we have Sam Williams, whether you like Sam Williams or you do not like Sam Williams, Sam Williams has to play again. Like Michael Gallup, we have Jalen Tolbert who came on the scene. Like I told you, every stop from high school to college was a big step. Jalen Tolbert's first year in college wasn't the best, uh, Moved on to the pros. He has to feel a little comfortable before he can perform. And his second year was much, much better. He caught some touchdowns. Was very more. He was very uh, confident in his route running, and he's got the hands. Uh, he has very good hands. And there was a uh, uh, Jalen Brooks also came on the scene. Uh, I think his ceiling is so high. He needs to play more, which is why Gallup needs to. I just hope that they release him and cut him. They're trying to keep him on the cheap, but I think ultimately it's going to end up with Michael Gallup's release because he's not a fool. His agents should tell him, Michael, there's a lot of money out on the open market um, that we can uh, have you tap into uh, and don't take a pay cut to stay with the Cowboys because you're not going to get the opportunity, and that's what Dallas is telling him in these meetings. In my opinion. Um, so this is why in ending this video, I don't want to go you know, too long. In ending this video, Dallas needs to get under the cap and they need to do it now. We need to address, I don't, you know, it, like if we can go out and get a running back in free agency, that would you know, then alleviate and hone in on offensive line, linebacker, defensive tackle in the draft, possibly a corner. I hear they're looking at first round corners. So th this has all been not at the speed that I would like, but to turn it more in a positive note, I do believe they're going to get well under the cap over the next few days. And they are going to be bring in just based on necessity. They're going to need to bring in players and free agency. They have to. Uh, they cannot go into the draft because you just don't have the bullets. You just do not have the bullets to be able to uh, get everything you need in the draft. So um, that's it. You heard most of everything that Jerry had to say. Uh, he's on the bus like he does every year at the Combine. Uh, he's a little testy and he's tired of hearing it. Well, we're testy too, Jerry. The fans are testy. Too. Um, we're tired of, you know, having three good 12 win seasons and only having one playoff win in three years to show for it. He is right. The good thing is he's hearing the message correctly as you have to stop the run. There's nothing more frustrating than not being able to stop the run. We did it okay in certain times. Basically, when we Left a team one-dimensional is when we did it, it good. But when the team was able to score points, we were in a lot of trouble. And being able to run the ball, that's what makes a great team, is being able to run the ball when the other team is expecting it. So 
That's it, people. That's the video. Let me know what you think about some of Jerry's comments. Uh, are you hopeful that they're going to get stuff done? Uh, do you think it's all BS? Let me know. Game time, Ryan, otherwise known as a mailman. I will try and do a live stream later. Uh, we will see how that goes maybe later this evening. Um, I'll let you know about primetime Phil. He did say we were going to do something in March, but he didn't tell me we're doing a show today. So if we do, it'll be 8 o'clock this evening on primetime Phil. But that's it for me. Game time, Brian, is out. Late.